We are from the Olof Palme Memorial Fund and the family extremely happy and honored this year to celebrate the prize in the Swedish Parliament the first time and we owe our thanks to the Swedish Social Democratic Parliamentary Group for having facilitated this house here of free thoughts. Dear friends, looking back on the recipients of the prize over the last years, it is evident that the world continues to be a cruel and hard place to live in for most of the people on this globe. On the eve of this new millennium, we gave the prize to a group of Swedes who were fighting racism and xenophobia in Sweden and some of them are present here. That fight, sadly, is not over, not even in Sweden, and certainly not in several other member countries of the European Union, where the civil and human rights of the Roma people are abused in an appalling way. I hope that the incoming Swedish presidency of the EU will make the plight of the Roma a priority. In 2002, we honored Hanan Ashrawi, a Palestinian human rights and peace activist who has a lot to do these days. In 2003, Hans Bleeks, who is still spearheading the fight against or for the fight for nuclear disarmament. In 2004, we honored three human rights activists in Russia among them Anna Politovskaya, who was brutally murdered two years later in the streets of Moscow. The OWD in 2005, Dao Aung San Suu Kyi, is still confined to her house arrest in Burma. And the 2006 awardees last year, Kofi Annan, not last year, next last year, Kofi Annan and Musad Mohammed Ali are working respectively for a greener and safer Africa and for human rights in Darfur. Last year, Parvin Ardalan was on her way to Stockholm to this kind of ceremony to receive the prize, but she was pulled off the plane to Stockholm just before takeoff. And we would urge the authorities in Tehran to respect her civil rights in the interest of progress of democracy in Iran Pavin Adalan is a true patriot who believes in her country and in the equality between men and women. This year, we honor a person who has in a very special way dedicated his life to the human rights of women, young girls, and thus to mankind in general, Dr. Denis Mukwege. We have read a lot about violence in the Congo, violence against women which kill more people than cholera, than yellow fever and the malaria. And the situation there is not new, it's not a recent explosion of violence. The tragedy in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, as it is called today, is not only an Af African dilemma. Ever since Joseph Conrad's book, The Heart of Darkness of 1902, and later, recently, explicitly and more explicitly, in Adam Hotchill's book, King Leopold's Ghost, we in Europe have known of the horrors inflicted upon the Congo by colonialism and other external interests. And the Cold War and the scramble for natural resources contributed to the drama. Prime Minister Lumumba was abducted and mur murdered by Western intelligence services. Mobutu was a Frankenstein's monster created and supported by Western interests. And of course, Doug Hammarskjöld died in the Congo on his peace mission. The present war that has plagued Eastern Congo over the past 12, almost 13 years has been much, as much a surrogate war between Congo and neighboring Rwanda as an internal ethnic insurgency. 
as the UN report underscored last December. The war has caused five million deaths and forced millions to flee. The DRC is rich in natural resources, but poor in benefiting from them themselves. 30% of the world's cobalt is in the DRC, as is 10% of the copper and 80% of coltan, much needed for mobile phones and computers. 80% of the Congolese live on less than 30 cents a day. The failure of international diplomacy is related to the economic roots of the problem, which began with the 1994 genocide in Rwanda. Until the economic conundrum is addressed, there is little prospect for a solution. Somehow, all of us are involved in the plunder of African resources. In all this darkness, Dr. Denis Mukwege brings light and comfort healing and hope. Dr. Mukwege was born in 1955 in a family of nine children. His father, present here, is a retired minister in the Pentecostal Church of Bukau. He is married to Madeleine Kavoyi Mapendu, and they have five children together. As a young age, Dr. Mokwege wanted to assist sick people medically. So he studied medicine at the university in Burundi. And he finished working, in, with that, he finished working in, in a Christian hospital in Lemura in South Kivu. He was particularly upset seeing the difficulties of rural women, how, what they went through during deliveries. He saw some of them coming on donkeys after bleeding profusely during difficult deliver deliveries at home, other women came into the hospital simply to die because they came so late after long unsuccessful, unsuccessful deliveries. This led him to decide to change from pediatrics, the specialization he had first wanted to do, to gynecology and obstetrics, which he studied at Angers University, University Hospital in France. In 1989, Dr. Mukwege practiced medicine at Lemora Hospital, where he set up a special department of gynecology and obstetrical services after training his assistants. Unfortunately, in 1996, the hospital was totally destroyed during the first war in the Congo. He became himself a displaced person. He then continued to set up a maternity ward with operation room at Panzi. But as soon as the hospital activities began, he realized that most of the women who came for the hospital were victims of sexual violence. This gave him the idea to create a special service for the treatment of women who were victims of sexual violence. And today, they treat, this the service receives on an average 10 women per day. Dr. Mukwege created a training program for nurses, midwives, and doctors. And he is cooperating with the Fistula Hospital in Addis Abeba, as well as now also with the Harvard School of Public Health and the University of Oslo. He received last year, December, the United Nations Human Rights Award. We are, as I said, honored and happy to have you here with your family. Very welcome. Now we will listen to some music. <laughs> 